Imagine this, you're a healthcare worker and you want to move to New Zealand. But where do you start? How do you go about getting the interview? Who do you phone up to even ask about a job? In this week's episode, you're gonna meet Prudence from Accent Health. Prudence has got the best company on the internet for people, healthcare workers who want to move to New Zealand. And today she's gonna share everything she has to say about moving to New Zealand as a healthcare worker and how you can make it happen. It's a drama coming to you from Taranaki, New Zealand. Hello. Daddy, I love you. My mother thanks you. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Good morning, Prudence. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, good morning, Liz. How are you? Good. I'm absolutely brilliant. We were just saying before we started recording, I'm happy because the weather's nice. It's the middle of winter and the sun is shining. It doesn't get much better than that. Absolutely. It's the same. So we're in the South Island and it's chilly in the morning, but it's beautiful, bright, clear days. Yes. Yeah. That's what we like, isn't it? So Prudence, I just want to jump in. I've got so many wonderful things to say about your company, but I want you to say who you are and what your company is and what services you offer to healthcare workers moving to New Zealand. I'm an ex-nurse. I haven't nursed for 25 years. So I've been recruiting for 25 years now. Um, we've got a team of six of us. So we recruit all medical professionals across the whole spectrum, nurses, doctors, physios, OTs, midwives, pharmacists, sonographers, anaesthetic technicians or ODPs, pretty much everyone, a medical professional who wants to work in New Zealand. And it's our job to get them a job. We're free service and the hospital pays us when you start work. So it's fantastic. That is real. And I'm so glad that you told me that because one of my questions was, and it's that, and I was, I felt really embarrassed about asking you this, but like, what is a healthcare worker? Because when I tend to think of healthcare workers, I can only ever think of like doctors and nurses and that's it. But like you just said, there's a, it, it, there's a list, isn't there? A mass of, of healthcare workers. Absolutely. And we've recruited, uh, recently recruited a podiatrist and an optometrist. So, um, you know, depending on the availability of jobs, of which at the moment there are plenty, there's a lot of funding going in post-COVID, we've got a lot of jobs available, which is amazing. So you're in a really good position if you want to think about coming to New Zealand now. Absolutely. Right. So I'm just going to play, play a little game. So pretend that I'm living in England and um, I'm a, a, a nurse and I want to move to New Zealand, what, what do I do? Where do I start? And, and, and just tell me about the whole process of what you would do for me. Perfect. Okay, Liz, first of all, we'll have a Zoom. I'll get a copy of your CV to review. And as long as you've had at least 12 months experience, we can start the process. I'll review your CV. I'll make sure your CV has all the information that we need in the correct format with the correct information and in a correct chronological order. So we get your CV, we check references, and we copy your ID documents. Once we get you what's called recruitment ready, we get you onto the registration process, and that takes three or four months. So we start you with the registration process, then we do the references, we've got your CV, we'll put it forward to an employer that's got a job in a location, in a specialty, in a time that suits you. So we'll say, hey Liz, you're a theatre nurse, you want to work in the private sector because you get Christmas off, you get more relaxed hours, and for example, you know, they're doing orthopaedics or gynaecology or an area that you want to really be in. So we have a chat to you, we take you through some interview practice, and we say, hey Liz, guess what, we've got an interview for you in um, Taranaki or Tauranga, and it's going to be on this date, so let's do some practice. We've got your references back, your registration's on the way, we've got your CV and your recruitment ready. You're ready to start work within six months. So we'd say, hey Liz, have you sold your house? Have you got everything organised? You're ready to start within six months. Are you happy with this location? You can do a bit of Google Earthing, a bit of research, have a chat to people on the Slack group and say, hey, what do you think of this area? What's the cost of living? What about the schools? What about the local dog park? You know, we want to help you find the place that's going to suit you. You have the interview. You get offered the job three days later. A week later, it comes in writing. And then you start the visa process. And we work quite closely with the NZ Shores. So if you want someone to help you with the visa process, they'll take you through that step by step. Then you say, right, I'm going to arrive on the 1st of March. Super. We'll help you find some accommodation. We'll send you some groceries. We'll network you with other people that are in the local area, same sort of peers, and you can make your plans to come out to New Zealand. Sounds that sounds, that sounds 
I'm not a nurse, but now I want to be a nurse because it's just like, you know, <laughs> I want to go through that. So all that is free. You offer all that for free. They don't have to pay for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yep. So the hospitals pay us to recruit you. Right. And that's been, that's, I've been doing this for 25 years. I've had Accent for 18 years. Kristen's worked for me for 16 years. Um, we've got Hayley, who's an ex nurse, Hannah, who's ex in New Zealand staff, um, Mel, who does all our social media, and Dominic, who's a pharmacist. So we've got a team of six really cool people, and we help you choose the right location, the right job, and help you through the process to come to New Zealand. That that is that is incredible, and 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 I just want to say it as well from a personal note because we've got lots of healthcare workers in our Slack group that have used you, and uh, and and like you said, that every single one of them when I talk to them, they say it was like having a friend on the ground. You know, it was just literally like having a friend there, just help, like you say, just the whole interview process, the the setting up where you're going to live and things like that, and it's just that's an incredible, it's an incredible service. What made you go into that? What what why did you do that? Ah, so St. Patrick's Day 96, <laughs> I was working at Great Ormond Street in London and I was working with another person who was working casually and she, I said to her, I helped all my friends get jobs. She said, you should set up an agency. So I did. <laughs> it was quite serendipitous. It's a lot of hard work, you know, working with government organisations, understanding and getting through the immigration bureaucracy, the registration boards, but we've got such a great relationship with them. You know, our, our duration that we've been working with them has meant that we know the process really well and we're there to help you when you need it. Some people, we just get their CV, arrange an interview, and they've got family or whānau in, in the location they're going to. Other people are by themselves. We'll pick them up from the airport. We'll help them find a flat. Um, and really, we do what it takes. You know, it's not just about getting them a job because they have to have somewhere to live. They need a bank account, a tax number, a bike or a car. They need childcare. They need groceries. So we help out with all of that. And it's so fun. I love my job. Don't know if it's obvious. I was going to say, whenever I speak to you, you're always like this ball of energy, just like, you know, yeah, you are. You just you always seem to be like loving your job. So, yeah. Drives my husband crazy because I do love it. And I'm lucky I get to travel all around the world. We've been to the UK and the US and Singapore this year. Um, and we're going to the US in December. We're going to Hong Kong next month and Singapore again. So I get to meet people in person as well as on Zoom. So is that you're just going around the world and like telling nurses and healthcare workers around the world about what services you offer and what New Zealand can offer them as a health. Absolutely. Provider. Yep. Yep. And, you know, we talk about the shift patterns, the medication giving, the patient relationships, how the orientation and induction works, as well as all the paperwork, the preparation for registration. So there's quite a lot involved with the paperwork for registration. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's uh, Is there anything, is it like, how do I say it? So in, in New Zealand, like the hospitals and the people who are recruiting, are they, would they tend to favour people more who have used an agency? Like if I say, go back to me being the nurse in England and I I don't use you and I just write to them and go, oh, hi, have you got a job? Would they favour me more if I'm working for a recruitment agency than if I'm just, just turning up? A really good question. Some hospitals have to be mindful of their recruitment budget, but because I own Accent, I can be flexible on that recruitment fee. Um, we are contracted to these hospitals. We have a preferred supply agreement, so we have to do certain things. But honestly, the, the hospitals love candidates that come through us because they're prepared, they're reference checked, they're registered, they're ready, they're supported through the whole process. Yes, it's a balance between them at, um, recruiting directly and recruiting through an agency, but we certainly make their job a lot easier for them and there's less fallout. So we'll deal with people and, hey, they might change their minds and that's okay. They get pregnant, they get married, they get divorced, they can't sell their house. There's a reason why they can't come to New Zealand, but we filter out those people genuinely well before they're ready to come to New Zealand. So we have more successful placements. Mm -hmm. So after COVID and things like that, the, the the healthcare it's well known that the healthcare is struggling at the moment, isn't it? Like to get there, you know, like you can't get appointments and everywhere's full and things. Can you just speak to me about the healthcare system in New Zealand at the moment and your thoughts sure. on it? 
Well, as a lot of people know, it's a socialised health system. Um, it's a big melting pot. So 60% of our doctors and 30% of our nurses are trained offshore. So we've got a lot of international medical graduates, which is a good thing. Um, it's under pressure as much as we need funding, we need staff. There's a global shortage of medical staff. So honestly, we're not immune to any of the challenges and we're not going to be you know, blindfolded and said it's perfect because it's not. There are waiting lists. Emergency departments do have people waiting in the corridors, which is tough, but we're doing the best that we can. And a lot of the feedback I get from people who are working here is he tangata, he tangata, he tangata, which is Māori for the people, the people and the people. And it is so true. So often I hear people say, should I accept a ride from a stranger? Someone saw me in the car park with a flat tyre. Should I accept a ride? Or someone offered to swap shifts because she knew that my kid was starting school. It, it, is that okay? Or, um, you know, I was short on groceries and I couldn't get to the shop and my credit card wasn't working. And, you know, the grocery store said, come back when you can. Like the coolest stories of people and real manakitanga, which is another Māori word. Manakitanga is love and spirit and just to be really caring. Um, so back to your question, the hospital system, it is challenged and we don't have enough staff. Sometimes we're short on equipment and beds, but it's a reflection of what's happening around the world globally. Mm. Manakitanga, I love that. That's lovely. What does it mean? Beautiful. Isn't it? Manakitanga is the love and the spirit and the culture. Right. So if someone, um, you know, if my son um, who's 13 did something really amazing, um, I would say paki paki, well done, ka pai. It's awesome, Manakitanga. And you can see his face light up. It's a beautiful thing. Manakitanga is um, just, and it actually sort of envelopes what the Māori culture is about, which is caring for the whānau or the family. Mm, mm. Oh, I love that. Um, so going back to coming, moving to New Zealand, and what what are the wages like? Because this is the other thing that we hear a lot of, is like Australia, New Zealand, Australia, New Zealand. Oh, go yeah. to Australia, it's a lot more. Are there, is it true that the wages are more in Australia? And what would you say? Yeah, okay, the wages might be more, but New Zealand offers this. What would you say? Don't have snakes. <laughs> yeah, we don't exactly. have spiders. <laughs> we don't have huge extreme temperatures of very, very hot. So there are three really cool things that New Zealand doesn't have snakes and spiders. Uh, well, we do have them, but they're not venomous. Um, and they, yeah. We don't have to worry too much. Um, the Australian culture is very similar to the New Zealand culture. Um, it's quite different in the different states and um, the wages are slightly higher, but not extremely higher. You know, comparatively speaking, the cost of living is slightly higher and you're likely to have to work in what's called an area of need in Australia, which is where they really, really need people. And you wouldn't get a job, for example, in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane. It would be out in Wollongong, potentially, depending on your skills and experience, of course. Um, New Zealand salaries are still very competitive. You're looking at about £45,000 for a general staff nurse, um, which is about $90,000. Plus, the great thing is you're getting offered flights, accommodation, rental car and shipping from almost all employers. So currently, New Zealand is offering a really good relocation package called through Health New Zealand. And so they offer flights for you and your family, a stopover for goodness sake and pick up accommodation and obviously we help coordinate a lot of this that's fantastic it's great yeah, yeah. It's really we, um they've really uh, new zealand has really picked up the game as far as being competitive in the worldwide sort of market for shortage and you know trying to attract medical yeah. staff yeah um going back to your location thing that you were saying because you were saying about don't you wouldn't be working in brisbane and sydney it, it is it more are we does New Zealand have a shortage more in the like the rural communities or is it like Auckland and Wellington that are struggling and Christchurch and, you know, like where, if you if you were needed most and you had to send them somewhere that was really, would it be the bigger places or would it be the smaller, you know, out in the out in the sticks places? It would depend entirely on your specialisation. If you're a specialised doctor, there might only be an opportunity in a smaller rural area. If you're a general theatre nurse, you can work in any 
hospital in all of New Zealand. So more generalists can work anywhere. Specialists will be a little bit limited. So because of the patient or the population size of New Zealand, you're very likely to have to cover respiratory and dermatology and cardiology and orthopedics, potentially in, in the same ward. So we like generalists. If you're very specialised, for example, if you're a paediatric physiotherapist, so you only do kids physio, then you're likely to be working in one of the larger hospitals that has that specialisation. Right, right. And my other question as well, because I, I again, this comes up in the group a lot. So, well, I don't know if you know our story, but when we moved to New Zealand, Brian was offered this job as a plumber and it was a really crappy job and it was like really hard. And, and our, our reasoning was always, look, do it, get our residency, and then we can move, you know, we can go. Yes. Does, does that apply to healthcare workers? Or when you're an, in a hospital, are you expected to stay in that job? Or can you just think, oh, okay, well, I'll just move to Christchurch now? Or how does that work? Um, I very rarely have I seen nurses offered crappy jobs. I have <laughs> seen some nurses who are very senior take quite a basic job to get into New Zealand and then go up the scale. So as a medical professional, you can actually pick and choose to work anywhere, Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, Dunedin, or, you know, Taranaki, Tauranga, Whangarei, all the, um, all the smaller regions. So you're not going to be stuck. And if you do get to New Zealand and you get to work and you think, actually, this isn't the patient population I enjoy, these aren't the skills that I uh, want to use, I really think I would like to move. Well, accents will help you move and make that move again. Fantastic. Fantastic. Where where do most people, this is just a like nosy question, but where do most people come from? From where around the world do you get the most people coming from, from healthcare workers? UK, US, oh. Singapore, oh. Netherlands, Canada. Um, we have a handful from Australia. Um, and yeah, probably US, UK would be the bigger series in South Africa as well. And which would you say out of all those people, out of all those countries, um, I don't want to say struggle because I don't want to, but which, which which is hardest to adapt, which which is completely different to the yeah. way you come from? Yeah, um, I would say after doing this job for 25 years, the US. Really, the US? Yep. I think um, you were going to say US... Netherlands or something. Yeah, no, the Netherlands were they they settled really nicely actually. Um, there's a long history between um, Dutch medical or Dutch migrants. Um, the US are used to a slightly different way of thinking, more litigious, more on guard, more sensitive in some ways. Having said that, it comes down to the individual family. Um, People from Singapore often have helpers at home, so they're having to cook their own meals and do their own housework when they get here. Um, that's can be that can be a challenge, and they often have been living with an extended family group um, in Singapore, so that's a challenge for them. Um, but honestly, the people I deal with are so amazing because they want to come to New Zealand for a reason. And that reason is a better life. Um, you know, it's not about academia or finance or status. So why they come to New Zealand, it's usually for kids. Um, and so we deal with the coolest people. We're so lucky. I always say, would I have them living next to me? And almost everybody hand on heart, I'd say yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you said that because I put a thing out on Slack last week and I said exactly the same thing. I said, I just feel like I'm surrounded by people that are think that, you know, like the out of the box is just like adventurers, like go for it people, you know, just these yeah. people that want to make something work are willing to make it work. And if you come to New Zealand with that attitude, then that you're going to win, you know, it's just, just come yeah. with that attitude of like, I'm coming to make it work. Not I'm coming to compare. That's the worst thing you can do, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Never compare. I and know. I'm embarrassed. And, you know, I don't think I've said this out loud, but all the candidates that we recruit, all our clients, make me look bad because they say, oh, this weekend I did Tongariro and next yes. weekend I'm going to Waiheke and then next weekend I'm running a marathon here and then I'm going to a cooking class there and I'm going to a marae. And I was like, what are you doing? Oh, well, actually, I'm probably working because yes. I love my work so much. <laughs> and I do love my travel, so I do travel. But, you know, the people that we get to come to New Zealand just make the most of it. Yeah. And 
they make me look bad. I've never thought about it like that. But they just, <laughs> they go, oh, where would you go if you went to um, Piha? Where would you go? And I'm like, I haven't been there. <laughs> well, actually, I have just the first time last year. But before that, so it's always quite fun and games. Do, do you know what? Do you know what, Prudence? Me and Brian went for a walk last night. It's so funny you should say this because we were having the exact same conversation. I was like to Brian, Brian, we've travelled all around the world. We moved to New Zealand, and do, I'm so embarrassed to say this out loud. We haven't even climbed Mount Taranaki, and it's in our back garden. And I you said, must. I know, I know, I must. But when? When am I going to get the chance? <laughs> like you, I'm just Stuart Island. <laughs> no. No, no, neither have I. I know. They do put you to shame. It's embarrassing, isn't it? I know. <laughs> I know. And they go, oh, we did this this weekend. You should do it. And I'm like, yeah, I probably should. But I've got three kids and a busy job and yeah. a lot of international travel. So I get to enjoy that. But it is. It is. People who come here, the, the, the demographic generally is people who are really cool and really want great things that New Zealand can offer. Um, I think the education system is fabulous. I've gone through by both the private and public education and now university. I think that's amazing. I think our primary health care system, which, you know, our GPs, that I think they're really good. You can get in on the day if you really need to. So they really consider it. Um, I think... You know, the weather's a bit questionable in some parts of the North Island, but, you know, South Island, we love it, which is great. So um, we just have to look out after our country, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, like you say, it's one of those things that uh, people say to me all the time, oh, what, what, what is it you love about New Zealand? And you, I, I don't like using, oh, it's the lifestyle, because what does that mean even? I don't know. But it's just, yeah. you know what? I think you've just cracked it when you said the people, the people, the people. I just think... I just think it's just, it's, yeah, it envelopes just, just different, just different to what we were used to in the UK, just different. Yeah. And just, I don't want to say simple, simple isn't the word, but it's, it isn't overcomplicated. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated yeah. to be happy. You know, it's just, yeah. I, and going back to the schooling thing, you know, again, like, you know, you're saying about primary and, and secondary. I homeschooled. Guess what? New Zealand was a hundred percent behind me when her, when I wanted to homeschool my kids. Yeah, and it had the best community ever. You know, it was just a, a welcomed with open arms. I can't say enough about it. And it's just like, yeah, you know, if you have got kids and you're coming to New Zealand, then why wouldn't you come to New Zealand? You know, it's just yeah, 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 absolutely. There's, I mean, there's so many good things. And having been in the states recently. You know, there's there's a lot of complication around ordering drinks at a restaurant, and and there's the trust factor, and then there's the worry factor with you know violence. And you're sure no country is immune to nat national, natural, or um, human disasters. But I think we do pretty well. Um, and again, the people, just yeah. you know, the smallest things. I start to stop and talk to people on the tube in London, and they think I'm a bit weird, but. I still keep talking. Then they hear my accent and they're quite they're quite friendly. You just pass it on, don't you? I met a guy. Yeah. I'll let you go in a minute because I'm sorry I'm rabbiting on. But I'll, 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 I've met a guy, guy down the cafe yesterday, and he was in his seventies and he's just started a website called oh, a, a kindness a, a kiwi kind kind of kindness or kiwi kind of kindness. I'll get it right one. I'm going to interview him, but he was just he said my main purpose in why I've built this website is to tell stories of like what we've come through in New Zealand and what we're doing. And, oh, I just thought that is, that is oh, it. Yeah. yeah, I do as well. It was just like, just keep it, pass it on, you know, just pass it on. Just, just yeah. keep it as, it, just, yeah. And it, just to hear him saying these stories about his dad and everything in the 1940s and stuff. And it was just like, yeah, I love that too. It's just keeping it, keeping it New Zealand, you know, just yeah. keep it. Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing we do when a doctor or nurse or a candidate arrives from overseas, we do a pay it forward. So the last person to arrive has to take the last person who's just arrived before that out for coffee, out for lunch, That's out to have a look at a car or something. And then when that person, they pay it forward to the next person and they say, oh, there's a physio that's just arrived. Hi, I'm a GP working here. Um, let me take you out for lunch and then you can pay it forward. And it's work brilliantly we've got this lovely circle of people and they send us photos oh, or during a marathon down in queenstown the dunedin crew amazing we love that crowd there's some really cool people we've recruited who 
pay it forward. And that's, um, that's pretty special. And that's what it's all about. And do you know what, Prudence, I can't say enough about your, your, your services, your company, who you are as people It's just, I can't think why you wouldn't use, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't imagine you'd even need to advertise because it's like, why wouldn't you use Accent Health? Um, but for the people that don't know about you, how would, can we get hold of you and, and reach out to you? Sure. So we're um, pretty active on social media, so Facebook, LinkedIn, etc., and um, Instagram. I'm getting my head around that. I'm a bit of a boomer, my yeah, me boys too. say. <laughs> but um, accent.net.nz, so that's our website, um, and you can contact us through that page. Um, we're always happy to for you to WhatsApp, WhatsApp us, um, but if you go to accent.net.nz, you'll get all our details. As I said, we're free service, and we love to help, and I work crazy hours, but also have crazy long lunches yes yeah well that that's exactly what i'm gonna i'll flash it up on the screen i'll put it i'll get brian to write it up awesome. and, you know and but yeah i just i can't recommend you guys highly enough so thank you so much for joining me today and um liz get back out and climb that mountain now prudence <laughs> yeah so no my hearty my have a good afternoon yes and to you too send me photos of mount taranaki please i will do honest <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Bye, Prudence. Bye. How long does it take when you move to New Zealand from another country till you truly feel like nothing will ever shock you again? You know everything there is to know about New Zealand. That's what we thought. But this week, we discovered three things that we were like, seriously? <laughs> and on the back of the toilet door, and they said, do not panic. <laughs> We are working to, in this week's episode, we're going to share with you some typical New Zealand ways that blew us away and made us realise we're still learning about living in New Zealand. <laughs>